All right, so this is my plumbed in Breville Oracle. This is the BES 980XL. And as you can see, I added a float valve to the water tank. Now, you're probably not gonna wanna do this to your only water tank. This is actually my second water tank. Um, and what I ended up finding out is that Breville, if you go on their website, do not sell a replacement water tank for the BES 980XL if you go on the page for that espresso machine, but the Breville dual boiler, the BES 920XL, actually shares the same chassis as this machine and they do sell the water tank for it. So this is about 30 bucks. Um, this is a quarter inch float valve that you could find all over Amazon and eBay. Uh, make sure it's not made out of PVC. This one is made out of palm. Um, and this is a, a refrigerator water maker reverse osmosis water line kit that you can find online. And of course, this is my water filter setup right here. The water tank is in that cabinet, but um, I have it plumbed into the, uh, the water faucet, which of course goes through the uh, post carbon um, water filter stage. You don't want to plumb it into the uh, you don't want to plumb it in to the water tank directly because it doesn't go through that last carbon stage. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, so you actually have to drill two holes, one through the stainless plate over here, which comes off relatively easily, and one through the plastic housing right there. Make sure you have enough clearance because there's a few washers that goes on that. Um, I had to use a drill bit larger than half inch. Uh, I forgot exactly what size it was, but I originally didn't have the bit for it, so keep that in mind when you start drilling into your only water tank. And um, yeah, very simple. Let's actually demonstrate this. I'm gonna pour the water out. Let me, let me pop out the water lines. Let's let's shut this off. So as the machine uses up the water, just like the float valve in your toilet, when it's depressed all the way, it add, puts pressure on the little valve right there, and you have water. I am concerned about the screw rusting over time. I'll have to keep an eye on that, but this is, it's most likely stainless, so it's all right. But um, very quiet. Let's put this back in the machine. I apologize for the shaky camera movement. There we go. As you can see, the water is filled up. Uh, another thing that you might probably want to keep in mind is that the water isn't meant. This isn't the ideal plumbed in setup. Ideally, you don't want water sitting in a reservoir where you can have algae growth. But um, after using this machine for about half a year, refilling it normally through the top, I didn't see any slime or any sort of residue build up over the years, so I'm sure it's gonna be fine. But ideally, you do wanna keep an eye on that. Um, maybe later on, when I'm more comfortable with drilling into this machine or just modifying it, I'll find where the pump is and I'll see if I can just plumb in the water intake directly. Of course, I'll also have to modify the reservoir's um, float gauge that measures if there's water in it or not. And uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but um, the drain is from my reverse osmosis system, but uh, the float valve has since stopped filling up and just because I'm gonna pour myself a shot not ideal but should be alright and uh, I guess that's it thanks for watching